You're not going to introduce me, Julian? Steve, I... Steve, nobody needs you to be introduced. Okay, I'll do it. Steve, KO5, ENW, SDR Play. Over to you, buddy. There you go. Thanks, Julian. Um, thanks for coming by. I just want to give you a, a quick overview of what we're showing here at Dayton this year. Um, it's all about networking and it's all about SDR Connect. So I have two setups working here. Uh, the one on the right is being controlled by a Windows laptop and the one on the left is being controlled by a Mac Mini. This is an old Intel Mac Mini, so nothing fancy there. And I just want to show everybody, you know, the key thing here is I have a local RSPDX R2 connected to the Mac. Now there's no antenna on it, so there's no signal. But if you're in a mode where you don't have any signals and you still want to do something useful, you can connect to a remote server. So I've set up a number of servers. Let's go to uh, John in the UK, and uh, he has a nice setup with a G5RV antenna going on, and uh, here you can see what we're doing on 20 meters. And uh, he is actually using one of the new NRSPSTs, which is an all-in-one box. So at his end, all he has to do is connect this to the internet and connect an antenna cable. And uh, no, no host PC running the server software is needed. So that's what we're seeing here. Uh, dynamite capability. And the NRSPST has a new mode we call IQ Lite. And basically it gives you all the benefits of a full IQ data stream, but at a fraction of the bandwidth. And we can look at the bandwidth from this icon up here. And you'll see we're only using seven megabits per second, as opposed to full IQ across a gigabit LAN would probably be three to 400 megabits per second. So that's pretty cool. Now, if we turn our attention to this setup here, one of the big complaints we've had from users about SDR Connect is they want rig control. And uh, I sympathize with that because I want rig control too. So by way of a demo, I've resuscitated my trusty Kenwood TS590SG, which I've been taking around the shows for years with my RSP1A connected on the side. And uh, I was giving Panadap for demos using SDR Uno. Well, we're getting ready to introduce rig control to SDR Connect. So I don't know if you can see the frequency here. One point, actually, it's we're off by a little bit for a local AM broadcast station. And uh, you can see as I turn the dial on the Kenwood, the display up here changes as well. Okay, so I can also click on the display in SDR Connect and that new frequency will be reflected down here. So that's normal, that's, that's a local RSP connected. But there's another aspect to this that makes it even more exciting, which I'd like to try and demonstrate to you real quick now. So we'll turn that off and we'll start it back up and this time we'll, we'll go to a different source. So now what we're doing is we're going to connect to my NRSP which is located in Colorado. And uh, here we see 20 meters from Colorado on my personal NRSP. I had my and this is still a proof of, of concept deal, but I just need to start up the... See, there's a rig control tab appearing down here. It doesn't actually do anything yet, but this is still in development. But if I go to this thing here, do a quick disconnect. And I do a quick reconnect. Now we're on a different source. Come on, Steve. Okay. So now what we see is the frequency is synchronized between connect and the radio. But bear in mind, the radio we're tuning is here in Colorado. It's, it's not this radio here. So that opens up all sorts of interesting possibilities. For example, if at your location where you're transmitting, it's a very noisy location and you have a hard time hearing distant contacts, what you can do is you can synchronize this radio with a remote receiver that may be in a more radio quiet area. 
So that one enabled you to make contacts that you couldn't do otherwise because you're able to take advantage of a lower noise reception environment. Uh, another possibility is you just want to test that your, free, your signal's getting out when you're transmitting. So again, you can connect to a, a remote receiver, it could be a buddy's receiver or something, and you can see what your signal looks like when it gets to the other end. And then of course the ultimate possibility would be why not put the transceiver itself at the remote location and then wherever you may be located you can log in remotely and control the transceiver as well as the receiver. So that opens up all sorts of possibilities. I know what everybody's going to ask is when can they have that? This is just a technology demonstrator here. This is running on Windows only. We need to make the version that runs on Mac and Linux and Raspberry Pi and that should be imminent so we hope to have a new release of SDR Connect with all those capabilities coming out really soon. And I probably spoke enough already so back to you Julia.